Homer Price, Chapter 3, The Donuts. One Friday night in November, Homer overheard his mother talking on the telephone to Aunt Agnes over in Centerburg. I'll stop by with the car in about half an hour and we can go to the meeting together, she said, because tonight was the night the ladies' club was meeting to discuss plans for a box social and a knit and sew for the Red Cross. I think I'll come along and keep Uncle Ulysses company while you and Aunt Agnes are at the meeting, said Homer. So after Homer had combed his hair and his mother had looked to see if she had her knitting instructions and the right size needle, they started for town. Homer's Uncle Ulysses and Aunt Agnes had a very up and coming lunchroom over in Centerburg, just across from the courthouse on the town square. Uncle Ulysses is a man with advanced ideas and a weakness for labor-saving devices. He equipped the lunchroom with automatic toasters, automatic coffee makers, automatic dishwasher, and an automatic donut maker. All just the latest thing in labor-saving devices. Aunt Agnes would throw up her hands and sigh every time Uncle Ulysses bought a new labor-saving device. Sometimes she became unkindly disposed toward him for days and days. Well, she was of the opinion that Uncle Ulysses just frittered away his spare time over at the barber shop with the sheriff and the boys. So what was the good of a labor-saving device that gave you more time to fritter? When Homer and his mother got to Centerburg, they stopped at the lunchroom. And after Aunt Agnes had come out and said, my, how that boy has grown, which is what she always said, she went off with Homer's mother in the car. Homer went into the lunchroom and said, Howdy, Uncle Ulysses. Oh, hello, Homer. You're just in time, said Uncle Ulysses. I've been going over this automatic donut machine, oiling the machinery and cleaning the works. Wonderful things, these labor-saving devices. Yep, agreed Homer, and he picked up a cloth and started polishing the metal trimmings, while Uncle Ulysses tinkered with the inside workings. Oof, oof, sighed Uncle Ulysses. Look here, Homer. You've got a mechanical mind, don't you? See if you can find where these two pieces fit in. I'm going across to the barber shop for a spell because there's something I've got to talk to the sheriff about. There won't be much business here until the double feature is over anyway, and I'll be back before then. Then, as Uncle Ulysses went out the door, he said, Uh, Homer, after you get that piece in place, would you mind mixing up a batch of donut batter and putting it in the machine? You could just turn the switch and make a few donuts to have on hand for the crowd after the movie, if you don't mind. Okay, said Homer. I'll take care of everything. A few minutes later, a customer came in and said, Good evening, bud. Homer looked up from putting the last piece in the donut machine and said, Good evening, sir. What can I do for you? Well, young feller, I'd like a cup of coffee and some donuts, said the customer. I'm sorry, mister but we won't have any donuts for about half an hour until I can mix up some dough and start this machine. I could give you some very fine sugar rolls instead. Well, bud, I'm in no real hurry, so I'll just have a cup of coffee and wait around a bit for the donuts. Fresh donuts are always worth waiting for, is what I always say. Okay, said Homer, and he drew a cup of coffee from Uncle Ulysses' super automatic coffee maker. Nice place you've got here, said the customer. Oh, yes, replied Homer. This is very up and coming. It's a lunchroom with all the latest improvements. Yes, said the stranger. Must be a good business. I'm in business, too. A traveling man in outdoor advertising. I'm a sandwich man. Mr. Gabby's my name. My name is Homer. I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Gabby. It must be a fine profession traveling and advertising sandwiches. Oh, no, said Mr. Gabby. I don't advertise sandwiches. I just wear any kind of an ad. One sign on front and one sign on my behind this way. Like a sandwich. You know what I mean? Oh, I see. That must be fun. And you travel too, asked Homer, as he got out the flour and the baking powder. Yeah, I ride the roads between jobs, on freight trains. You know what I mean. Yes, but isn't that dangerous, asked Homer. Well, of course, there's a certain amount of risk, but you can take any method of travel these days. It's all dangerous. You know what I mean? Now take an airplane, for instance. Well, just then a large, shiny black car stopped in front of the lunchroom, 
and a chauffeur helped a lady out the rear door. They both came inside and the lady smiled at Homer and said, We've stopped for a light snack, young man. Some donuts and coffee would be simply marvelous. Then Homer said, I'm sorry, ma'am, but the donuts won't be ready until I make this batter and start Uncle Ulysses' donut machine. Well, now aren't you a clever young man to know how to make donuts, she said. Well, blushed Homer, I've never really done it before, but I've got a recipe to follow. Now, young man, you simply must allow me to help. You know, I haven't made donuts for years, but I know the best recipe for donuts. It's marvelous, and we really must use it. But ma'am, said Homer, now just wait until you taste those donuts, said the old lady. Do you have an apron, she asked, and she took off her beautiful fur coat and her rings and her jewelry and rolled up her sleeves. Charles, she said to the chauffeur, hand me that baking powder. That's right, and young man, we'll need some nutmeg. Well, so Homer and the chauffeur stood by and handed things and cracked the eggs while the lady mixed and stirred. Mr. Gabby sat on his stool, sipped his coffee, and looked on with great interest. There, said the lady when all the ingredients were mixed. Just wait until you taste these donuts. Looks like an awful lot of batter, said Homer as he stood on a chair and poured it into the donut machine with the help of the chauffeur. It's about ten times as much as Uncle Ulysses ever makes. Well, but wait until you taste them, said the lady with an eager look and a smile. Homer got down from the chair and pushed a button on the machine marked Start. Rings of batter started dropping into the hot fat. After a ring of batter was cooked on one side and an automatic gadget turned it over and the other side cooked, the donuts were done. The automatic gadget gave the donuts a little push and it rolled neatly down a little chute, all ready to eat. Well, that's a simply fascinating machine, said the lady as she waited for the first donut to roll out. Here, young man, you must have the first one. Now, isn't that just delicious? Isn't it simply marvelous? Yes, ma'am, it's very good, replied Homer as the lady handed donuts to Charles and to Mr. Gabby and asked if they didn't think they were simply divine donuts. It's an old family recipe, said the lady with pride. Homer poured some more coffee for the lady and her chauffeur and for Mr. Gabby and a glass of milk for himself. Then they all sat down at the lunch counter to enjoy another few donuts apiece. I'm so glad you enjoy my donuts, said the lady. But now, Charles, we really must be going. If you will just take this apron, Homer, and put two dozen donuts in a bag to take along, we'll be on our way. And Charles, don't forget to pay the young man. She rolled down her sleeves and put on her jewelry. Then Charles managed to get her into her big fur coat. Good night, young man. I haven't had so much fun in years. I really haven't, said the lady as she went out the door and into her big shiny car. Those sure are good donuts, said Mr. Gabby as the car moved off. You bet, said Homer. Well, then he and Mr. Gabby stood and watched the automatic donut machine making donuts. After a few dozen more donuts had rolled down the little chute, Homer said, I guess that's about enough donuts to sell to the after theater customers. I'd better turn this machine off for a while. Homer pushed the button mark stop, and there was a little click, but nothing happened. The rings of batter kept right on dropping into the hot fat, and an automatic gadget kept right on turning them over, and another automatic gadget kept right on giving them a little push, and the donuts kept right on rolling down the little chute, ready to eat. That's funny, said Homer. I'm sure that's the right button. He pushed it again, but the automatic donut maker kept right on making donuts. Well, I, I guess I must have put one of those pieces in backwards, said Homer. Then it might stop if you push the button mark start, said Mr. Gabby. Homer did, but the donut still kept rolling down the little chute, just as regular as a clock can tick. I guess we could sell a few more donuts, said Homer, but I'd better telephone Uncle Ulysses over at the barber shop. Homer gave the number to the operator, and while he waited for someone to answer, he counted 37 donuts rolled down the little chute. Finally, someone answered. Hello, this is the saber bop. I mean, I mean the barber shop. Oh, hello, Sheriff. This is Homer. Could I speak to Uncle Ulysses, please? Well, he's playing a little pinochle right now, said the Sheriff. Anything I can tell him? Yes, said Homer. I pushed the button mark stop on the donut machine, but the rings of batter keep right on dropping into the hot fat, and an automatic gadget keeps right on turning them over, 
and another automatic gadget keeps giving them a little push, and the donuts keep right on rolling down the little chute. It won't stop. Okay, hold the hire. I mean, hold the wire, and I'll tell him, said the sheriff. Then Homer looked over his shoulder and counted another 21 donuts rolled down the little chute, all ready to eat. Then the sheriff said, he'll be right over. Just got to finish his hand. That's good, said Homer. Goodbye, sheriff. The window was full of donuts by now, so Homer and Mr. Gabby had to hustle around and start stacking them on plates and trays and lining them up on the counter. Sure are a lot of donuts, said Homer. You bet, said Mr. Gabby. I lost count at 1,202, and that's quite a while back. People had began to gather outside the lunchroom window when someone was saying, there are almost as many donuts as there are people in Centerburg. I wonder how in tarnation Uncle Ulysses thinks he's going to sell all of them. Every once in a while, somebody would come inside and buy some. But while somebody bought two to eat and a dozen to take home, the machine made three dozen more. By the time Uncle Ulysses and the sheriff arrived and pushed through the crowd, the lunchroom was a calamity of donuts. Donuts in the window, donuts piled high on the shelves, donuts stacked on plates, donuts lined up 12 deep all along the counter, and donuts still rolling down the little chute, just as regular as a clock can tick. Well, hello, sheriff. Hello, Uncle Ulysses. We're having a little trouble here, said Homer. Well, I'll be dunked, said Uncle Ulysses. Darned if he won't be when Agnes gets home, said the sheriff. Mighty fine donuts, though. What do you do with them all, Ulysses? Uncle Ulysses groaned and said, What will Aggie say? We'll never sell them all. Then Mr. Gabby, who hadn't said anything for a long time, stopped piling donuts and said, What you need is an advertising man. You know what I mean? A sandwich advertising man. You got the donuts. You got to create a market. Understand? It's balancing the demand with the supply. That sort of thing. Yup, said Homer. Mr. Gabby's right. We have to enlarge our market. He's an advertising sandwich man, so if we hire him, he can walk up and down in front of the theater and get the customers. You're hired, Mr. Gabby, said Uncle Ulysses. Then everybody pitched in to paint signs to get Mr. Gabby sandwiched between. They painted sale on donuts in big letters on the windows, too. Meanwhile, the rings of batter kept right on dropping into the hot fat, and an automatic gadget kept right on turning them over, and another automatic gadget kept right on giving them a little push, and the donuts kept right on rolling down the little chute, just as regular as a clock can tick. I certainly hope this advertising works, said Uncle Ulysses, wagging his head. Aggie will certainly throw a fit if it don't. The sheriff went outside to keep order because there was quite a crowd by now, all looking at the donuts and guessing how many thousands there were and watching new ones roll down the little chute, just as regular as a clock can tick. Homer and Uncle Ulysses kept stacking donuts. Once in a while, somebody bought a few, but not very often. Then Mr. Gabby came back and said, Say, you know, there's not much use of me advertising at the theater the show's all over, and besides, almost everybody in town is out front watching that machine make donuts anyway. Zeus, said Uncle Ulysses, we must get rid of these donuts before Aggie gets here. Looks like you'll have to hire a truck to wall them away. I, I mean, haul them away, said the sheriff, who had just come in. Just then there was a noise and a shoving out front, and the lady from the shiny black car and her chauffeur came pushing through the crowd and back into the lunchroom. Oh, gracious, she gasped, ignoring the donuts. I've lost my diamond bracelet. And I know I left it here, here on the counter, she said, pointing to a place where the donuts were piled in stacks of two dozen. Yes, ma'am. I guess you forgot it when you helped me make the batter, said Homer. Then they moved all the donuts around and looked for the diamond bracelet, but they couldn't find it anywhere. Meanwhile, the donuts kept rolling down the little chute, just as regular as a clock could tick. After they had looked all around, the sheriff cast a suspicious eye on Mr. Gabby, but Homer said, He's all right, Sheriff. He didn't take it. He's a friend of mine. Then the lady said, Well, I'll offer a reward of $100 for that bracelet. It must be found. It really must. Now, don't you worry, lady, said the sheriff. I'll get your bracelet back. Zeus, this is terrible, said Uncle Ulysses. First, all of these donuts, 
And then on top of all that, a lost diamond bracelet. Mr. Gabby tried to comfort him, and he said, There's always a bright side, Ulysses. That machine probably will run out of batter in an hour or two. If Mr. Gabby hadn't been quick on his feet, Uncle Ulysses would have knocked him down, sure as fate. Then, while the lady wrung her hands and said, We must find it. We must find my bracelet. And Uncle Ulysses was moaning about what Aunt Agnes would say. And the sheriff was eyeing Mr. Gabby as a suspect. Homer sat down and thought hard. Well, before 20 more donuts could roll down the little chute, he shouted, Say, I know where the bracelet is. It was lying here on the counter. I bet it got mixed up in the batter by mistake. The bracelet is cooked inside one of those donuts. Why, I really believe you're right, said the lady through her tears. Isn't that amazing? Simply amazing. It'll be burnt, said the sheriff. Oh, moaned Uncle Ulysses. Now we have to break up all these donuts to find it. Think of all the pieces. Think of all the crumbs. Think of what Agnes will say. Nope, said Homer. We won't have to break them up. I've got a plan. So Homer and the advertising man took some cardboard and some paint and printed another sign. They put this sign in the window and the sandwich man wore two more signs that said the same thing and walked around in the crowd out front. Then the donuts began to sell. Everybody wanted to buy donuts, dozens of donuts, because the sign said, fresh donuts, two for five cents while they last. A hundred dollar prize for finding the donut with a bracelet inside. But you have to give the bracelet back. And that's not all. Everybody bought coffee to dunk the donuts in too. Those that didn't buy coffee bought milk or soda. Well, it kept Homer and the lady and the chauffeur and Uncle Ulysses and the sheriff busy waiting on the people who wanted to buy donuts. When all but the last couple of hundred donuts hadn't been sold, Rupert Black shouted, I got it! And sure enough, there was the diamond bracelet inside his donut. Well, then Rupert went home with a hundred dollars. The citizens of Centerburg went home full of donuts. And the lady and her chauffeur drove off with the diamond bracelet. Homer went home with his mother when she stopped by with Aunt Agnes. Well, as Homer went out the door, he heard Mr. Gabby say, Neatest trick of merchandising I ever seen. And Aunt Aggie was looking skeptical while Uncle Ulysses was saying, The rings of batter kept right on dropping into the hot fat, and the automatic gadget kept right on turning them over, and the other automatic gadget kept right on giving them a little push, and the donuts, they just kept rolling on down the little chute, just as regular as a clock can tick. They just kept right on a-comin', and a-comin', and a-comin', and a-comin'.